Don't watch this. Biggity bam, son. Look at that. That's just like magic, ain't it? So now look. I have a complete veneer, you might say. Nice and clean and smooth. A complete veneer, peel, skin of the vinyl plank. How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. This video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Uh, it might be pushing the boundaries a little bit of what you can and can't do with vinyl plank, which almost everything you can do as long as you got the know-how and the tools and the means to do it. Uh, we never know what we're going to come up with, what we're going to have to create or fabricate or make out of the planks until we get to the job because every situation is different. This here is also a new situation. Uh, so again, this is pushing my boundaries on what I have ever done with vinyl plank. We're going to check it out here in my studio as I always do. Instead of just trying something out new on a job, I always like to do it here first to make sure it's going to be okay. Um, we are in a situation where the client does not want a big lip. I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, most cases I can make, uh, I guess in every case, I can make my own transitions out of the plank themselves if I'm not using the Sterods products. Uh, Sterods.us, by the way, very, very nice, elegant, classy products. If I'm not able to use those, for instance, such a, a high step down as in I'm doing on this project, I have to make my own, or if it's just something wonky and out of the ordinary, I gotta make my own custom transitions. So I've got plenty of videos on that. I'll, I will link to that with a card, or uh, maybe just at the end of the video, I'll leave a link in the description to making your own transitions. However, let me show you what I was talking about with the lip. So this right here is, this is the product that was installed and I've now, now I did not do this, this was done by another installer, but what they did, they put flat metal down, a big a wide flat metal, which is just unsightly. You can imagine how a big wide flat metal is on a vinyl plank. But anyway, this is the product. It is a Shaw Florte and uh, that's installed. So I've got to customize the transition for this. However, I wanna show you the difference here. Um, the carpet store always has plenty of plank around, so whenever I make my transitions, I will use this uh, glue-down vinyl plank because it's thinner than the click-together vinyl plank that was actually installed. Uh, oh, I started using this now on the top of my transitions because this uh, part of the transition, I only use it on the top because it's what overlaps and gives me an overlap transition. So uh, it is quite a bit thicker. It's about half as thick as the commercial grade vinyl plank here. Let me just let you see real good there. So this click together is about twice as thick as the commercial grade glue down. So that's why. And as a matter of fact, this is actually a pretty thin product here. It's SPC and it's pretty thin. So most WPCs are thicker than this. Actually, I don't know any of them that's this thin. All WPCs are thicker than this. But anyway, that's why I've chose to started using these as the top piece, simply because when it overlaps, like this right here, you've got a much thinner, about half as thin as an overlap here, as you do with the traditional twice as thick here with your click plank that you're actually installing. So with that being said, Let's get into what we're doing. Oh, and even this, with it being thinner like this right here. See here, let me show you that. So this is how much of an overlap I would typically have in my homemade transitions. But for this client, that can't fly. There's an elderly lady there that can't do any, any overlap. What they can... This was too much. Whenever I was out there and I was doing some repair work, I showed him what I was going to do. He said, eh, that's a little bit much. I don't want to take a chance on tripping over that. So uh, he opted to put the flat metal back down because it's thinner. So that's what we did. I said, I'll work on something. I might have an idea. I'll test it at my house first. 
If I like it, we'll do it. We'll see. But anyway, so that's what we're here doing today. thousand years later this particular job is quite a bit higher so I'm trying to make it realistic just like it's going to be on the job so therefore I'm going to build this up just a wee bit right there let's see here about two planks high just so I want to try to do this as realistic as possible because that's how it's going to be on the job and I want to make sure it's going to be all good on the job so that's the reason why I'm doing this right here right now in my studio so this is the drop-off that we're working with there on the job now before I go putting all this stuff together I always do this I always see exactly what I got to do to make this work so I got it two two planks high right there so automatically I know I'm going to need to be two planks high and then we got that little bit of extra so I'm thinking and yes that right there is really nice show you what I'm talking about so with the two layers of vinyl plank boom boom that I'm working with and then I actually found some thinner vinyl plank back in the back that actually uh, is going to make for a thinner overlap actually as a matter of fact uh, i got just a smidgy widgy of a lip right there i mean tiny super tiny i might try to use that thicker vinyl plank the glue down for this piece right here just to give it a little bit more lip right I mean a little bit more height or thickness rather than this piece it ain't gonna matter if this is just a smidgen crooked it don't have to be dead on straight for what I'm doing I'll show you why in just a minute main thing is I just want that thickness that the bottom piece offers instead of the top piece There we go. All 
right now, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay, so that's good. It's still a tiny, whiny little bitty piece, but definitely much better than that. I mean, it's, it's super, maybe a 30-second, and I am completely okay with that. What we're going to do now is take some of this scrim tape. See the scrim in it? Some people call it scrim tape or pressure-sensitive tape or booger tape. All kinds of different names for it. Whatever you want to call it, I guess. Whatever you choose. Whatever you choose. And apply that. Right down on there. And peel it. I'm actually going to put this skinny piece in the center. I'm going to line the back again because if it's off a little bit, the front is going to be getting trimmed whenever I turn this into a reducer. So that's the reason it don't matter if it's off just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing right here again to uh, my, adhere my second piece to it. My third piece, rather. I've got one more piece to put on there for the buildup. Wipe the bottom, the bottom of this piece off. Make sure it's clean. Line the back of it up again, and adhere it once more. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing again with the scrim tape. I'm going to apply that right on top there again. Hold it, pull it tight, and stick it. There we go. Okay, so with the application of the very last piece, I cut it um, about five eighths of an inch wider than these pieces here. And that being, this is actually going to be the overlap for the reducer. So I want all my extra to be back here in the back, okay? That way, this part right here. It's going to overlap my adjoining plank just like so. Okay, starting to make a little sense. Boy, that's nice too. This is going to be nice. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sure it's making a little bit of sense now. So let's get it peeled, stuck, and let her fly. So then I'll be able to go out there cut my bevel for the actual reducer, do some finish smoothing work on it with the sander and be done with it. Oh, no I won't. Then I'll be able to use these super awesome tool by Make It Match. If you guys have not seen that tool that I use, you are going to be surprised. Absolutely awesome. Let's see here. Inch and a half and two and an eighth. Okay. Again, I'm just lining up the front, putting it where it needs to be. Give it a little smack down there, make sure it's all straight. Now, I get to go out there, turn this chunk of plank into a reducer. Let's do it. So, I got to turn my 45, all, I mean, turn my saw all the way over to a 45. And honestly, a 45 don't give you or don't give me 
as much bevel as I would like to have. It's, it might seem like a lot, but honestly, in reality, it don't. Uh, it just don't give you as much as I would like. So therefore, I do something a little different with this. What I want to do is figure out the distance that I need for my plank to get cut starting right here at the bottom is where I want my cut to start and to come back this way just as far as possible. Watch my pen. I want it to come like this right here and cut this whole part here off. That's the plan. I got something right here. It's nice and thin. And that will only put the back of my plank up on it, which is exactly what I want. Oh, it might be a little. Yeah, that's perfect. So if you can see, right here, I actually just have the back of it on it, and the front is raised up. So it gives it a little more angle right there. Get it where I feel like it needs to be right there, and I'll give it just this little bit of a test run and see where it's cut and if I need to go deeper I will That's not too bad. Okay, so I have this now is the shape that I have. My overlap here, this reducer section. So because this is a hard line right here from the table saw and a hard line right here from the edge of the plank, I've got this little finger plane. Uh, I'll leave links to all these things that I use in the description of the video if you want to get them that way you don't have to search and search and search i seen a video with this and i had to dig and dig and dig to find this little bitty guy and i use it often on vinyl plank so i'm going to take and run this little joint little uh planer little plane right over this line on top and it's going to get rid of that hard line. You say, wow, you must have a pretty steady hand to do that and make it perfectly smooth. Nah, that ain't the case. That's only one step of the process. I'm fixing to do another one. Now I got that hard edge knocked off here. I'm going to do the same thing on the back edge right there. Just about at a little bit of a 45 angle maybe. Just to knock that hard edge off right there. This one is a little bit more uh, stubborn since we have to hold it up off the floor and stuff. But nonetheless, we'll get that hard edge off anyway. All right, I'll show you what it looks like now since I took that plane to it. So, see my hard edge has now got a little bit of a round roundness to it. My hard edge here is now almost completely smooth that actually did really nice that time but I'm not done yet now I'm going to take my sander and again I'm going to hit 
everything that's going to be visible when this is completely done the top and this front part and i'm going to sand it really smooth you uh do you have to do that eh, i don't guess you have to but if you just want it to look one 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 super smooth and beautiful that's what i like to do so that's what i'm going to do <laughs> We now have a super smooth chunk of plank put together. I mean, feels really good. All the edges feel nice and everything. So now the next thing we need to do is we're going to clean it off real good. Get rid of that powdery substance and make it where it's going to stick really, really good. The peel from our vinyl plank flooring that we're going to use what peel what are you talking about like an orange peel exactly like an orange peel it's exactly what it's like i'm going to peel this plank somewhat like you would peel an orange i'll show you that in just a moment and again that is using the very very awesome and efficient tools uh by make it match i will leave links to all of this stuff again in the description of these videos of this video makeitmatch.com if you can't wait and you want to go there right now and check it out makeitmatch.com um, what are you using to clean that with i am using denatured alcohol is what i'm using to clean this off with this is now going to be nice and clean for our peel to go on it okay now this is the magic right here this is a double-sided once again a double-sided hash quote quote uh scrim tape it's not like the scrim you seen a while ago however it does have a scrim it's a very fine scrim it's not nothing big like you was seeing a while ago it actually feels like it has um maybe a uh, fabric or something in the tape that gives it the strength and yes it is strong and yes it is sticky and it does get a very good hold i'll show you this here up close it's already stuck to my fingers there so watch this here this is the double-sided tape itself i'm going to pull this let you see see the look of it right there it, it won't even hardly stretch because I, like I said, I feel like I feel like it might be fabric in there. You can see how it kind of see the little strings of it right there. How it kind of separates like that and right there. Perfect. There we go. Oh, by George, I believe that is fabric for sure. That's like little strings in there. It sure is. It's exactly what that is. So that's where this gets a strength from, and it is awesome, okay? So what I'm going to do now, got a couple different widths of this. Whichever one I feel like is going to do good, I will use. Let's see how much it's going to take to go around this transition. Um, we've got a half inch there, a half inch, and two and a half. And yeah, that's not very much extra. That's enough because this is a, oh, this might be three and a half. Yeah, okay, so this is three and a half. I will use that then. I was thinking it was three. This is three and a half, and this is a five. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this tape pulled all the way out. The length of my uh, transition right there, and I'm going to try to get it halfway straight here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this piece in first along this edge and make sure I have enough here on this side to wrap over this bunch right here. And that's what I'm going to judge by right there. And then I know whatever I have left is going to be plenty to do the other side. Oh, slid on me. Let's go about right there. Okay, and about right there. Oh, oh whoa. 
Okay, I'm good with that right there. Okay. Now I can take cut that off and it's good. Alrighty. Since I got this on a flat surface, I'm just gonna roll that right there and get it adhered to the top of it. And go ahead and uh Start wrapping this over the top right there. I'm going to use my thumb to do that. You might see it puckering back up there. What you're, what is actually puckering is not the tape itself. I'll show you in just a second. It's actually the um, the non-sticky coating that goes on right over this, so it don't stick all to itself. It's like the brown paper on the other. It's just the paper that peels off that's sticking. See, watch this. See, the tape is stuck. It's just the paper. If you can see the tape, you can see where I've mashed it with my thumb. I'm actually going to do a whole lot more mashing. You can see the dark spots. That's where it got mashed on. Watch right here. Watch this. Now watch that. See that? That's a good adhesion. That's what you want everywhere. I'm just going to work this all the way down the top and the back and i'll show you exactly something else that's really awesome that is provided by the geniuses over at makeitmatch.com let me show you here one second there I'll work this right on around then i'll show you okay again any any kind of imperfections that you might see in this is the paper itself it's not the tape the tape is sticking superiorly <laughs> if that is a word all right so they also provide that's right at makeitmatch.com this is the little pack you get if you buy this tool that comes with a little uh squidgy you might say uh, roller this is freaking awesome that's what I'm fixing to use and a flat one here and also bangity bang the freaking uh, plank skinner itself this is awesome you see what it is there I'll show you that in just a moment just a moment all right so I'm gonna flip this back over and take my smooth roller and just roll it all over again we don't want any of those white spots on the tape we want this thing to have a good adhesion now this little thing right here you see the shape of that see that that is perfect for this little spot right here watch this i'll show you so you can see the white spots See the light spots here, 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 where it's not stuck very good? Watch this. This fits perfectly in that crevice. And look at that. Biggity bang. Now look. Nice and black right there now. That works awesome. What? fits right in these bevels really nice this little flat this little funny roller does right there okay i'm going to leave this like this now and we're going to go ahead and peel skin peel our plank like an orange okay you might say boy this sure is taking a long time to do this yeah you better be making some money on it when you're doing that or else it ain't going to be worth it at all again you can't do stuff like this on every job if you do you gotta make it worth your while most of the time, um, I'm using the steroids. They're very good, very good transitions. And usually, uh, every other job or every now and again, I can't say every now and again, it happens actually quite often, you run into a situation where you need to make your own. It actually does happen quite often. Okay here comes the magic let's peel this bad boy down shall we 
All right. So this thing just goes right in your drill, whatever kind of drill you got. This goes right in there. Okay, that's going that way. Turn this around about like so. See, right there, perfect. Okay, now this thing splits. See how it's got an opening in it right there? So this part of the plank, see what I did there? This is the actual wear layer of the plank. Real thin on top. So what uh, what I'm gonna do is take this thin part that I've got started, put it in between those prongs right there, and then when it rolls, it's gonna peel it right off of this plank for me. Super fast. You might say, and without crinkling it, damaging it, busting it, kinking it, anything like that. So you might say, well, I can do that with my fingers. You know what, you can do it with your fingers. As a matter of fact, I was doing it like that before I was introduced to this bad tool right here. This thing is freaking awesome. And you'll not do it as fast or efficient by no means without this. I promise, been doing this a long time with these transitions. Tons of them, tons of experimenting and stuff like that. So you just slowly get her going there. And watch this. Biggity bam, son. Look at that. That's just like magic, ain't it? So now look. I have a complete veneer, you might say. Nice and clean and smooth. A complete veneer, peel, skin of the vinyl plank. There's now no print on this vinyl plank at all. So now that I've got this, I want to do the uh, same thing I did a while ago. I'm going to clean it off with denatured alcohol, warm it up with a heat gun, make it lay nice and flat, then I can work with it. I want you to watch this plank as I start heating it and just watch what happens to it. See that nice curl right there? Watch this. Uh, lucky. Get laid out there. Watch this. Looky there. Ah, beautiful. Just beautiful. Lays nice and flat. Relaxes. Works out lovely. Same thing down here. Look at this other end. Trying to curl up a little bit. Watch this. Biggity bam. Nice. Just going to do the whole plank like this, or the whole peel, get it nice and warm, make it lay flat. Another thing about this, when it gets warm, it gets super, super pliable, okay? So watch this. I'll heat this up, and I'll just show you what you can do with this whenever it's warm. It is crazy. You're not going to overheat it unless you just like bang in one spot forever. Then you might melt it because it is vinyl. I'm going to show you something with this. You can literally see how floppy that is. Look at that. You can literally do anything with this stuff. You see, nothing's hurt or damaged at all on that. Watch this. See that? Smash it all up. See that? I'll straighten it out and show you something now. See all those wrinkles? It looks awful. Oh, that looks horrible. Okay, watch this. Little bit of heat. It's like a magic potion that you spray on it. Ta ta ta. You ready? Voila. Nice. Ta ta. Okay, enough playing around. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy done up now. I want to go ahead and clean this thing off. I want it nice and clean. Um, for uh, to get the dust. Everything off of it, I want it to be nice and clean again so it gets a good adhesion, okay? 
That's the whole purpose of this. Just so there is no garbage on it. Then it gets a good adhesion. I'm going to go ahead now and peel this tape off. The top. Um, I don't guess there's any particular. Actually, I will. See how this is a light color right here? I want to use the light side of this to butt right up to that versus using the dark side of this to butt up to that. It'll just make it just make it blend in that much better. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around, make sure I get that light spot right where I want it. Again, I'm going to just eyeball. I'm not going to measure if there was a really indefinite grain or something like that in it. I would measure and mark it and make sure it was dead on. Uh, let's see here. I'll make sure I have enough to wrap all the way around and get it nice and straight. Yeah, again, nice and straight as in, you know, I don't have to be crazy with it or anything like that. Okay. Got this all stuck on my plank. I don't want to, or on my peel. I don't want to get rid of this yet because I have the sticky on the bottom here that I don't want to touch anything. So I'm going to place it right back on there so I don't uh, mess nothing up. So I got it on there now. Okay. There's my transition nice and stuck. I'm going to go ahead and warm it up and start working it on there. Okay. Again, this stuff gets super pliable whenever you heat it up. So it makes it real nice and easy to work this, wrap it around like a Christmas present or anything like that that you need to do as long as it's warm. So you can already see it starting to just like fold right down there over that curve all by itself. This stuff is great. Got it nice and warm. I'm gonna take my flat roller and just roll on top of that. Make sure it's got a good adhesion there. Boy, this almost turned out to be a daggum MGM movie or something. It's a daggum long video. Mm-hmm. Daggum dope long, man. All right. Since it's warm, I'm working it right down that. Right on down that nose. The reducing part of it. Heat it up again, make sure it stays. Whatever you heat this and cool it to, say if I wanted it to, uh, if I heated it up and folded it and then let it cool, folded, this would be permanently folded. It would not try to straighten back out. So whatever shape this cools in, that's what shape it stays in. So that's a good thing about it. It's got no memory to it at all. So it's not going to be trying to peel off or anything like that. Again, whatever shape it cools off to, that's the shape it's going to stay for the remainder of its life. Okay? All right. Now, start working on this other side here. See how easy that works when it's warm. This is phenomenal. It works very good. As I stated at the front of this video, there's not a whole lot that you cannot do with vinyl plank. Almost everything is doable with vinyl plank flooring. You don't like what the manufacturer has to offer for a certain transition? Make it your own. Custom make it to be any how you want it. You can match your grain up you can do anything with it you can have the best looking floor in your area in your town or anything like that simply by customizing and making your own product out of the plank itself so it's going to be a perfect match you see those plastic pieces that the manufacturer has to offer most of them are made by a different company 
And what I mean by that is uh, one manufacturer, I'll just say, I'm now, uh, I'll just say Shaw, okay? Now, I don't know whether Shaw does or not. I think they might make their own transitions. As a matter of fact, I know Shaw does. But um, I'm, I'm going to use Shaw just because it's on the top of my head there. Shaw sells you a vinyl plane. We're just going to say now. They don't make their transactions. They'll have another company. They'll give them the colors of every kind of vinyl plank that they make, and they will make transitions to those colors. So because it's not made by the same manufacturer, it's not going to be a perfect match. I mean, you can see that even with different, different brands of stain. So you go to Walmart, and you get you some Men Wax stain, then you go to Home Depot and get you some of that stain. That's, I can't even think of the name of it right now. It starts with a V, nonetheless. You get some of that. The colors are not the same. Men wax and the other colors are not the same that Home Depot has to offer. So that's why it's important to stay with the same manufacturers when it comes to a lot of the colors and choices of stuff like that. Unless, of course, you are able to customize your own products out of the products they are absolutely the best way to go and if you're doing hardly any at all the makeup match plank skinner is absolutely worth the money some people look at it oh man that's almost four hundred dollars no it's not okay four hundred dollars gets you a whole kit i mean a whole kit several couple cases of tape couple rolls of the big each kinds of tape that they have to offer and the tools themselves if you want to buy just the tools uh golly i want to say it's a hundred and something dollars which is very 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 affordable considering how much a person makes how much money they make when they customize these transitions that's right customized transitions pay extra you absolutely have to charge for these well Reuben how much do you get when you make these transitions um, I've never done one like this like I said with the routing and everything like that I have made regular doorways and stuff like that I charge $50 a doorway for every one that I make uh, a lot faster than what I'm doing here because I'm doing all kinds of stuff I can get one of these down I can make about a dollar a minute less than that probably or uh, more than that probably because it don't take too awful long to do one of these as many as I've done I'm getting the hang of them I can bam 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 knock them out of the park and I'm done uh, yeah probably about a, a dollar a minute is Pretty close, I'd say, to what I get whenever I make these custom transitions. And again, a lot of times I'm right here at my studio in the convenience of my own home and I will make them for other installers here in town. I'll make them for the store owner so that he can have them on other installers' jobs and stuff like that because the, a lot of guys just don't want to take the time to do it, learn how to do it, and get efficient at it. They'd rather just have somebody else pay and have them made Per so seventeen dollars and fifty cents a linear foot if they are over four foot long. If they're over one doorway long, I get paid by the linear foot. If it is a regular doorway, it is fifty dollars per doorway. That's what I charge. Again, it only takes a couple of those, maybe three of them. It will take three of them, and your make it match tool is paid for. Three doorways, okay? That's one job. After that every bit of that money that you make with the make it match tool is 100 percent profit you cannot go wrong by buying tools that speed up your process it is how businesses evolve it's how we make money it's how we profit by cutting our time down on jobs now not by taking the easy cheap crappy way out we definitely want to do quality work not. all right so we had a minor studio hat mishap right there 
uh, my battery went dead on my phone while I was recording and I didn't realize it. Unfortunately, I've already got the entire trim piece completely wrapped up. Wasn't able to show that. Hopefully you guys can figure it out. As a matter of fact, I've got other videos uh, showing that process that I will definitely link to. Nonetheless, it's done. Let's take a look and see how it worked out, okay? All right, so this is the end of the profile. That's exactly what our reducer looks like. And I tell you what, you can see how nice and thin that is right there. How clean of an edge that tapers down to right there. That is a nice looking transition, if I do say so myself. That turned out nice. Okay, so with the thin overlap right here and the little bitty groove cut out right here that's the whole thing about it that's what we want to see if it's going to be nice and fit good that's the whole purpose of this video again we have a step down so that's why we are making this reducer transition for the job that I'm talking about that I'm practicing this for let's check it out ooh me I like that looky there son let's check this out up close let's check it out here see if I can get you in here without being too much shaking there so that looks nice I like that now the overlap okay now i got that pushed down where it would be right there as if it was installed and i tell you what man that is very very insignificant let's get something and test that right there so looky here i mean goodness gracious that is nice you can barely and i mean barely see a little crack under that and it ain't even by much it's just right there i mean that works out very nice i absolutely like that there we go i think i was in the light a little bit there we go now you can see i guess I am absolutely okay with that. That looks freaking nice. That is really good. You can see the thickness that I made my overlap here. And you can see the thickness that I routed out of my plank. It's almost the same. And I tell you what, that is very nice. I like that. That will definitely work in my standards. Okay, now check this out okay so look at the end of this that peel is really adhered there's no for, there's no uh, bubbles where it's not sticking anywhere it is completely adhered to it nicely same thing right there no bubbles or anything it's all completely adhered to it nicely that's what you get that is exactly what you get when you use these products right here makeitmatch.com www.makeitmatch.com plank skinner that's the kind of results you're going to get if you do it all righty okay i know this was a super long video i did not plan on it being that long but it just turned out that way and i am sorry i cut out the spot with the actual wrapping but things happen sometimes when you're working by yourself you can't be on both sides of the camera at once so i apologize for that anyway maybe this will give you guys some insights and just let you see everything is in, oops everything is possible almost with vinyl plank flooring if you have any questions or would like any video recommendations leave a comment in the comment section i will answer it and i will be uh I will try my best to fulfill your questions, videos, or whatever you have need of. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to the channel. Until next time, FBSB's out.